All right, guys, what we got going on here is uh, I'm gonna show you what it takes to put in what is known as the Wise Fox kit, which is basically Steve Mass Arms and John Duncan's knuckles in a fox body. Uh, this is my 90 GT. It's already been three valve swapped, and right now we're taking apart the suspension and. Uh, if you need to know how to take apart brakes, um, then maybe this is a little too in-depth for you. Uh, we're going to start off by getting the K-member and all the suspension out from underneath it. Um, Got to do that, as you see right now, by supporting the engine uh, with an engine hoist. I later found out uh, that the legs of an engine hoist really get in the way. You can get different uh, engine cradles that kind of going between the fenders to support the weight of the engine. Um, also here, the driver's side motor mount was a little sticky. Um, so after, as you can see, the camera fell. Took a little bit. Um, now you can really tell how the legs of the engine hoist really got in the way of uh, just about everything. The jack, uh, jack stands, just to get this K-member out. It's, uh, 18 millimeter and 16 millimeter bolts uh, for the K member. You gotta disconnect the uh, power steering lines and the steering shaft, leave the calipers hang. Um, I did end up having to take off the passenger side strut and then the assembly basically fell out of place and slid out. little cleanup it never hurt nothing so now I'm just giving a good old uh, inspection see if there's anything uh, we should see and then unwrap the new Maxim Motorsports 2.1 K member uh, perfect for removing weight and if you have a modular engine in a Fox body now we're Gonna finalize bolting up the, the new K member in place and torque and specs, of course. Again, those are 18 for the four front ones and 16 millimeter for the rears. We do have the torque specs, obviously, those specs are included in the instructions from Maximum Motorsports. Once it's all torqued, uh, now I can let the engine hoist down and now that the motor is supported I get the throttle body and my air intake back on that's pretty specific to this car uh, if you still have a 5 liter in there it's probably a different story where you can grab onto those intakes are pretty stout on the old 5 liters um, now we're starting to take off the front bumper most of the stuff is 11 millimeter there's a couple 8 millimeter brackets uh, we got to take apart, uh, of course, disconnect the headlights and the corner lights wiring and a couple bolts. Pretty simple stuff there. Then we can start on the fenders. Uh, the whole reason why I'm taking apart the whole front clip is for the strut tower and apron modifications are going to be pretty much impossible if you don't take off the fenders so again mostly eight millimeter bolts if you didn't already take the inner fender out um, there's only one bolt in the door jam the rest of it comes out pretty quick Templates, passenger side strut tower, that's what's got to come out. And in this area here, we're going to be trimming that off completely and then doing some other fancy work that we'll document later. So that's 
that's that. So here's what the passenger strut tower looks like after it's opened up. Um, realized I need way better tools for this, but uh, got this side done, I think. Here I got myself a plasma cutter and went to town on that area. I showed you to cut out a little bit ago. Um, you got a Use a little creativity. I use a, just a simple chisel, pry bar, and a hammer to open up the apron. So what we got here is the first part of this apron folded over. As you can see, I was this bottom part of the apron is actually a lot softer than I thought. This is where all your strength is in your strut. As why John Duncan definitely suggested getting a torch and heating that thing up I don't have one currently so I'm gonna try and do whatever with the sledge and stuff for now until I go borrow a torch or something so that's what it looks like so far alright guys a little winded didn't think it was going to move that well, but a little sledge action. Put that baby right in his shape. It almost looked like it was meant to be that way. So, probably get a welder tomorrow. Now I got to do the other side. Day six, um, just got the apron and towers welded up, did a little stitch welding. As you can see there, uh, since everything's going to be a lot more stiff with everything we're doing here, laid some paint, etch primer first of course, and then whatever color you desire. Also did a little 415. I don't know if you ever heard of it. It's a little brush on steel to, uh, you can put on right exposed metal to keep it from rusting. And this side has from the factory a hole that when you cut into the apron and everything, it uh, makes it a little difficult. So I had to put a little piece of steel in there. Um, it's also dimpled, so it makes it, I just cut that out bigger and went to town on that. Also did some stitching here. So, there's that. Also last night I took the Maxim Motorsports cam plates here and these bolts were usually facing that way. Um, according to Duncan's setup, that has to be done because otherwise this plate is over here for when you flip these plates from driver's side to passenger side the way Maximum Motorsports intended it. Um, but since we need as much camera at the tower as we can get with the longer arms, this is what needs to happen. So you just gotta cut the welds off, um, flip them, re-weld them. You can also grind that little portion off. I had a bridge for it at work, so that's so this can get more caster, which is also good for avoiding that wheel flop. Now we get to 
put together the Maxima Motorsports coilovers. Went with a 10 inch, 700 pound I-Box spring. All I gotta do here is follow the Maxima Motorsports directions and can't really go wrong. They have them pretty well laid out for you. So I'm setting up the arms. Um, I have the spacer set so that the control arm is further back for less caster. Not sure why I didn't, can't really measure the stock came ever. But this is three and a quarter inch, and these are three inch. Um, so I'm just gonna have to put a five eighths washer back there to make up that difference. And uh, when you're tightening these heims, make sure they're as perpendicular or parallel with that as possible. I'm going to get the other side together and kind of measure the wheelbase to make them even for a starting point. Alright, got the other side in. Uh, just want to make sure, make a note of, make sure this thing rotates real freely. You don't want any binding or anything. I haven't tightened the bolts on yet, but I'm fairly confident that. Uh, It'll still move freely once they are tight, so... What I'm doing here is getting the wheelbase even on both sides. The driver side was the shorter side, so I made the passenger side shorter by adjusting that front heim joint on the arm. Now I'm installing the knuckles from John Duncan. Um, pretty standard stuff here, there's nothing be surprised if you ever change a ball joint or work with suspension, you should know how to do that. Now I'm just installing the brakes. Again, pretty simple, standard stuff here. Uh, can't torque that wheel bearing nut just yet until you get the car on the ground and of course the racks aren't even installed. So. so now I get to probably put them in the car. Um, Get the steering rack in there, get it in place. Nothing really too fancy here. Now I get to put together the bump steer kit from Doug Bannon Brink and install it. See where I had that outer heim joint, it's you know maybe a half inch from the center link there. Real beefy parts. Definitely recommend it. So now all the suspension's bolted up, um, finally get to let the car down, get to see what it looks like. And don't forget to torque those hubs, uh, the torque to quite a bit, foot pound, like 250. Um, then you can finally tighten down the upper strut mount nut. Don't forget to roll back and forth, kind of settle suspension with springs this tight. It uh, really might not make a difference, but you never know. So now, just in the process of getting each side level, they were within an eighth of an inch of each other, so took a similar chassis point uh, to measure from the floor and Maybe lowered it three quarters of an inch from where it started, and uh, that was it. Okay, so I got the car on the ground, ride height set pretty much where I want it. I don't exactly have the size tires in the back that I'm probably going to be running most on the street, but that's that's is what it is. Um, got it even on the ride height even on each side. Just wanted to go over a couple few things that. I'll look out for. Obviously, I haven't aligned it yet, but um, you want your strut tower, or excuse me, your strut, you know, as far forward and out as possible, and the 
static hammer isn't too shabby. Um, it's probably not going to get much better than that. It's maxed out. Uh, you also want to check um, for clearance between your tower and the spring. That's that's the big reason why we're modifying those towers and aprons. Um, that spring also check it at full lock. Um, I checked this when the car was still in the air. Um, that spring does it doesn't just rotate on its axis like that. It kind of swings over it gets pretty close to the tower so make sure that's clearing wherever you get it set at so what I'm going to do now is hook up the rest of our steering rack stuff just the lines and that's about it we'll show you what it looks like at full angle with some wheels on it that's about it that concludes the installation of what we know as the Wise Fox kit put together by John Duncan and Steve Mass. Uh, Steve Mass get hit up for the arms, knuckles, John Duncan, and the sweet end links are from Doug Vandenbrink. Not going to get into trimming or putting on the fenders in this video, that's for another time and uh, I'm sure this video is already long enough as it is. So. Can't wait to get this thing thrown around some corners this season. Uh, so we'll see you out there. Keep drifting.